You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. All right, well, let's uh, take a quick peek at last week's trade. Uh, it's fairly straightforward and it has a little bit of time to play out. We were looking at the airlines. We were looking for a little bit more volatility in the airlines uh, as we head into the earnings season. Uh, right now, we see that United Airlines was uh, down a little bit today, but up over the week. Uh, last trade on United Airlines was at uh, 57.54, down 67 cents on the day. And I should let you know that we are taping Options Playbook Radio. It is March 31st and the markets are closed. Last week, we looked at doing a back spread in United Airlines, which basically just looks for some volatility. And in that instance, we went out and sold an in-the-money option contract with the April 23rd expiration. We sold the 49-strike call last week and bought two of the 56-strike calls. Now, the market was right very close to 56. So at this point in time, it's up $1.50. So the trade is a little profitable. Uh, uh, the, the the markets are a little bit wide at this point in time, but you would just stay the course in this instance. The market did run up uh, beyond 58, so at one point in time, it would have been even a little bit more profitable, but I think with uh, going out till April 23rd with basically 23 days remaining until that expiration date, I think we would just let it ride, so it's that simple. Um, so as far as United is concerned, we just hope that we get a little more volatility in the underlying stock, and we hope that volatility is to the upside because since we've talked about it, uh, the market is higher. So we want it to go in one direction, and we love it to move four or five or six or seven points in that direction. And the best direction for our strategy would be to the upside. So uh, we'll stay the course on that. Maybe we'll even come back and check on it on the next edition of Options Playbook Radio. But let's get into our trade this week. There's been a lot going on in the marketplace. We came very close to the S&P 500 index hitting 4,000 today. It did set a new record high, not a record close, um, but the S&P 500 index was up around 14 points today. We also saw the VIX drop down below 20, another close below 20. This is becoming a thing for the VIX uh, index right now, closing below 20. It's happened six times in the last 15 days where we've been down below 20. And overall, that is a good sign for the marketplace, especially if we see the futures 
contracts all dropping down, going out to May, even out as far as July, now below the 25% level. Uh, it would be nice to actually see the futures contracts start trading in tandem with the VIX. Uh, in other words, as we go out further in time, the marketplace expecting less volatility as opposed to more. That hasn't happened since the big downturn, uh, since the March pandemic, or the downturn in last March after the pandemic was announced. So we're going to do something in the EV space today. Uh, a little bit of a weird EV play, but Ford made the news today and, and on a negative sign, but it, I think it's a little bit more about them just kind of cleaning house a little bit, but uh, they, they've stopped some production in some places and they're letting some people go and reformatting how they're doing a lot of different things. But a lot of people, when you think of Ford, uh, don't really think about it as an EV play overall, an electronic vehicle play. But Ford has announced recently that they have made an investment in a startup EV called Rivian. And that investment was $500 million. And they also are looking to implement some of their technology and some of their new vehicles. We don't really know how that's going to play out yet. But the reason why you might have heard of Rivian is that Amazon actually, back in 2019, ordered 100,000 electric vehicles that are supposed to be rolling out sooner rather than later on that big order of electric vehicles from that company. And Ford is kind of a way to play that. And I think the marketplace has actually rewarded Ford for that news in general. And over the last six months, Ford has actually outperformed a lot of the other uh, auto companies overall. So it's down a little bit today, and I think it's more of a restructuring thing. So in this instance, if you had a position in Ford and now you got a little bit of a pullback after a decent run-up, a common thing that I like to do, if I'm still positive on Ford, now once again, this isn't meant to be a recommendation overall, I'm just trying to show you how you might want to use options in this scenario, uh, is to actually just sell a good old cash-secured put. Uh, Ford right now is trading at 12.25. It's down 21 cents. There's a lot of twos in there today. Um, and so because of that news, it didn't drop precipitously to the downside. But we're going to look at going to the April 16th expiration. Uh, and it's important to note that Ford's earnings aren't until the end of April. They don't have a specific date yet, but we want to avoid the earnings. We don't want to be in the stock uh, during that volatile earnings announcement. So we're not looking to sell a put that would uh, bring in that implied volatility around that earnings announcement. But we don't mind owning the stock. Um, the way that I would look at a cash secured put in general is that I'm selling the put, hoping to buy the stock at a lower price. And with a little bit of the down, with the downturn today, implied volatilities are still fairly high in Ford. Uh, right now, that April 16th expiration, the implied volatility of the at-the-money option contracts is right around 43% implied volatility. Ford, uh, as with most stocks over the last year, is trading at a fairly elevated volatility. So if we're thinking about buying some more Ford uh, in this instance, why not sell a put to try to purchase the underlying stock? So with Ford at 12.25, we're going to sell the 12 strike put. And that put means that we're willing to buy 100 shares of Ford at $12, spending $1,200 to buy that 100 shares. And can't forget about commissions in the whole battle thing here. Not a commission to buy the stock, but there's commissions to trade the option contracts. And then your outlook on Ford is that 
I'm going to be long forward uh, uh, for the longer term, for the long haul. And this is just one way to add to your current forward position or go out and start a new forward position as the Amazon trucks are supposed to be rolling off the production line for the company that they made an investment in and are currently doing some deals with overall. So that's a simple paper trade for this week. And every, you know, we don't always talk about extremely basic scenarios, but uh, this is one instance, especially on a lower price stock. We don't really have to worry about spreading it off because basically Ford trading at $12.25, there's just not a lot of risk overall on the company. And I don't anticipate that Ford's going away anytime soon. So uh, that was going to be your max risk. It would be we sold the 12 strike put. We'd have to be buying stock at 12. The worst case scenario, Ford could go from 12 to zero. That's the bottom line. That's the most that you could lose on that 100 share investment if you were put the stock. So my biggest nervousness here is that if the underlying stock does actually run down below 12 over the the next 16 days, then and then bounces back, maybe I miss out that, on that opportunity to actually buy it. So I do want the stock to be below 12 if I'm doing this strategy uh, by that expiration date. And if that is, well, then I'm hoping to get put the stock and actually own the stock. Now, if you do the math on this here, you know, today Ford is down 21 cents. So 21 cents on a $12.25 stock that's almost 2%, 1.8% if you want to be a little bit more accurate. But then you're bringing in $0.31 cents by selling that put option. So that put option is uh, uh, $0.31 cents on a $12.25 stock. That's about 2.5%. So you're, now you're looking at around 4% that you're actually bringing in on this stock. And then you throw in the fact that it's got to go down another 25 cents to actually get to that point. You're actually looking at buying forward over this 16-day period at quite a discount to where it's currently at. Now, that's a big if because we do need the market to come on down to that 12 level in order for that to happen. All right. Well... So that's going to be it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer in the program, send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.li.com. Please follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Brian Overby. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.